This video introduces exponential functions and compares them to linear functions. We say that a quantity y increases linearly with time t if every time t increases by 1, the quantity y increases by the same amount. It gets the same amount added to it. For example, in this chart, as t increases from 0 to 1, y increases from 2 to 6, so that's adding 4 to y, and as t increases from 1 to 2, y goes from 6 to 10, so that adds 4, and each of these steps are also by 4. When we graph y against t, we see that the points line up in a straight line. The slope of the line, the rise over the run, is exactly the amount that y increases by every time t increases by 1. In general, the equation for a linear relationship is y equals mt plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept, in other words, the value of y when t is 0. So for this particular line, we have y equals 4t plus 2. Since the slope is 4, and the value of y when t is 0 is 2. The y-intercept can also be thought of as an initial value, the value when we start off at t equals 0. If instead a quantity y increases exponentially with time t, that means that every time t increases by 1, the y values get multiplied by the same amount. So in this example, as t goes from 0 to 1, y goes from 5 to 15, that's multiplying by 3. As t goes from 1 to t, 2, y goes from 15 to 45, that's a multiple of 3. And similarly, all of these ratios of successive numbers are ratios of 3. You can see that the y values increase much more dramatically when we multiply y by the same number each time compared to when we add the same number to y each time. Here's what the graph of these points experiencing exponential growth looks like. One way to write the equation for exponential growth is y equals a times b to the t. Here, a represents the initial value. In other words, the value when t is equal to 0. That's because if I plug in y equals a times b to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1, so that would just be y equals a when t equals 0. It's also the y-intercept, since the y-intercept is the value of y when, when our x value or our t value is 0. So it's hard to see from the graph what the y-intercept is, but if we look at the numbers, when t is 0, y is 5, so that point right there is 5 high on the y-axis, and our initial value, our a value for this particular function is 5. The number b is called the growth factor. The growth factor is the number that y gets multiplied by every time you increase t by 1. That makes sense from the equation y equals a times b to the t because when t equals 0, you just have y equals a. When t is 1, you have y equals a times b to the 1, which is a times b. When t equals 2, you have y equals a times b squared, so that's a times b times b, and you can see that each time you increase t by 1, you're multiplying by another factor of b. For this particular function, our growth factor b is 3, and so our particular function here is y equals 5 times 3 to the t. The two examples here, the linear function and the exponential function, are examples of growth where the values are increasing as t increases. That's because the slope here is positive and the growth factor here is bigger than 1. So we're multiplying each time by a number bigger than 1. But it's also possible to have linearly, linear decreases or exponential decreases known as exponential decay. For the linear relationship shown here, 
y is going down by 5 each time t increases by 1. And therefore, the slope is negative, and the function itself is decreasing. In the second example of exponential decrease or exponential decay, the growth factor is a number less than 1. It's 1 half. So y values get multiplied by 1 half every time t goes up by 1, and therefore the y values are getting smaller. To summarize, for a linear function, if the slope m is bigger than 0, then we have an increasing function, or growth. If the slope is less than 1, we have a decreasing function. And for exponential functions, if the growth factor b is greater than 1, we have an increasing function, exponential growth. And if the growth factor is less than 1, we have a decreasing function, exponential decay. The form of the function y equals a times b to the t is only one of two standard ways of writing an exponential function. The other standard way of writing it is y equals a times e to the kt. Here, e is the famous number 2.71828 and so on. Any function that can be written in this form can also be written in this form and vice versa. No matter which way you write it, a still represents the initial value. In other words, the y value when t equals 0. In other words, the y-intercept. That's because in either form, if you plug in t equals 0, e to the 0 is 1, so you just get a for y. Just like if you plug in 0 for t here, b to the 0 is also 1, and you just get a for y. The parameters b and k are related by the equation b equals e to the k. That's because we can rewrite y equals a times e to the kt as y equals a times e to the k raised to the t power, using our exponent rules that tell us that when we take a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. When we write it the second way, it's easy to see that e to the k is playing the same role as b is in this form of the equation. Therefore, b equals e to the k. We can use this relationship to convert from one form to the other. For example, if we're given an equation in the second form, say something like y equals 15 times e to the 0.1t, then we can convert it to y equals 15 e to the 0 0.1 to the t. This is our b, and using a calculator, I can see this is the same thing as 15 times 1.10517 to the t. So I've converted it to the first form of the exponential function. Conversely, if I start with something in the first form, say y equals 6 times 3.1 to the t, then I need to rewrite that as y equals 6 times e to the k to the t. So my e to the k is supposed to be 3.1, and I can use logs to solve that. Taking the natural log of both sides, that gives me that k is equal to the natural log of 3.1, which is approximately 1.1314. And therefore, I can rewrite my equation as y equals 6 times e to the 1.1314 to the t, or y equals 6 times e to the 1.1314 times t. This video introduced the equation for an exponential function y equals a times b to the t, where a is the initial value and b is the growth factor, which corresponds to to true growth or increase if b is greater than 1 and decrease or exponential decay if b is less than 1. We also saw an alternative form of the exponential equation, y equals a times e to the kt, where a is a still the initial value 
and e to the k is now corresponds to b, the growth factor.